Over the years, our relationship deepened, both at work and personal. And we witnessed your visionary leadership that steered leads to greater heights, giving birth to the Elbury Hotel and the Leeds Preparatory School. Your ability to see what others couldn't and your personal touch left an indelible mark on your work and interactive community. Today, as we bid farewell, I do not say goodbye. I say thank you. Thank you for the love that knew no bounds, for the sacrifices made in silence, and for the lessons that will continue to resonate, to resonate in my heart. Your legacy is not just the memories we hold, but the terrible mark of love you have left on the toughest trip of our lives. I am committed to carrying on your work to the best of my ability, making you proud. The task may be challenging, but with God by my side, I am determined to honor your legacy and continue the remarkable journey you began. Rest peacefully, dear mom. Your love will forever be the guiding light that illuminates my path with the time of love. Rest in peace, mom. Thank you. 
symbol of redemption. She constantly talked to me on how she had picked up her life and reestablished herself in her later years. And this is when she was in her late 40s. In fact, that was a current stick that she convinced, she used to convince me to locate that to Kenya. Because at that time we were feeling that we were too old to change jobs, too old to do this. And she told me no. Uh, 40 is the new 20. So she convinced us to relocate and we came and joined her business. She questioned, and this is when we were still in the US, she questioned, why were we putting so much effort into building up a nation that was not even our own? She made me understand that working was not only about providing for my family, but it was also about contributing to the lives of others, and that we should think hard about whose lives we were really impacting. I know many are surprised and even shocked at the passing of now. I will take this time to just um, give a brief or mention a few things about her journey. Um, because the last two years I walked very closely with her. And also because um, there are some lessons that she wanted us to learn from her, her experience in a typical manner as an encouragement to many other people, especially those who are navigating the medical space. So many don't know that for over five years she was not feeling really well. And for the last three years, her illness started to escalate. Many of the events, shows, meetings, speaking engagements, church services, school meetings, those that she attended and many of you know because you attended them together with her. She was participating in her very weakened state. God is the one who provided her with strength and the ability to give her all at those events. But in the background, I tell you she was very wary. She visited many doctors during this time of sickness and nothing was to be diagnosed um, to explain why she was feeling well, why she was ill. She spared no expenses, as you've already had, and we traveled to India, we traveled to the US, looking for different um, specialists, um, desperately, desperately trying to find out what was ailing her. And a conversation we had was, you know, not knowing was worse than knowing that they don't even know. So when it was finally diagnosed that she had cancer, of course her first reaction was she was very angry, because she had put all this effort into trying to figure out what was wrong with her. We could not understand how the specialists would have missed a disease that is so big, so devastating, and so evil. But she refused to dwell on this aspect. She refused to dwell on this knowledge. And she quickly put on her armor, preparing herself for the battle ahead. She fought hard through the whole of 2023. We were all truly, we truly believed that she would recover. So the lesson she wanted us to take heed of, number one, take full control of your health care. Believe what your body is telling you and never give up on finding your why. Secondly, do not be afraid to challenge the medical field. Let us not forget they too are practicing their craft and they do not have all the answers. So do not allow them to settle if you are still not feeling well. But most importantly, she wants you to know, to put your trust in God. He is a miracle worker, the true healer, and the terminator of your life. Right now, we may feel that cancer has grown. That cancer has taken another loved one away from us, and I'm sure this makes us very angry. Inside. But family, friends, 
care of myself. Let me tell you that cancer did not win. But our God has taken mom over as her reward. And this we can testify from Isaiah 57, 1 to 2. And I read, The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk up, who walk uprightly, enter into peace. They find rest as they lie and death. And that is mom. So I want to leave you with another challenge that mom has on down to us. Those who knew her personally and those who knew her from a distance. And we can all attest and you will continue to hear very many stories about mom. But I'll read from the Bible. And I've struggled with this Bible. Ecclesiastes 9.10 and I read because this is what's not said. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Can we all adjust to that? Yes. That is not. For there will be no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are born. May God continue to bless the fruits of her hands here on earth, and may she continue to rest.